Hey everyone, Brandon here from TruckSafe. On January 6, 2023, the Federal Drug and Alcohol Clearinghouse will have been in effect for three years. That's an important milestone for a few reasons, not the least of which is the regulatory change that occurs on that date. We're going to break it all down in this video, so stay tuned and do us a favor, hit that like and subscribe button below if you find this type of content helpful. Alright, so some fairly significant changes in store come January of 2023, but before we get there, let's first talk about the Clearinghouse more broadly. What is it? In a nutshell, the Clearinghouse is an online centralized database that identifies in real time commercial drivers who are prohibited from driving due to a drug and alcohol program violation. The centralization of this type of data was a long time in the making. Federal regulators worked for years to close gaps that existed when motor carriers were tasked with manually reaching out to the previous employers of driver applicants to inquire whether those applicants had violated the drug and alcohol testing regulations in the past. Without proper visibility of this data, carriers were too often allowing prohibited drivers to continue operating commercial vehicles. In practice, the Clearinghouse works similarly to state and federal driver licensing databases, except, of course, that the Clearinghouse is focused on drug and alcohol testing violations. The Clearinghouse is meant to be checked by motor carriers, law enforcement, and state drivers licensing agencies to determine whether a particular driver has committed a violation of the drug and alcohol testing regulations that would render him or her disqualified to operate a commercial vehicle, and if so, whether he or she has successfully completed the required return to duty process to get back to work. In that sense, the system is similar to the long-standing Motor Vehicle Report, or MVR, process, whereby motor carriers must periodically run MVRs on all drivers to ensure they are properly licensed to operate a commercial vehicle. The Clearinghouse functions through regulatory reporting and querying obligations. Information concerning a commercial driver's positive test result, refusal to test, or other violations get reported to the Clearinghouse and associated with the driver's CDL number. That information then appears in any queries run by subsequent employers during the hiring process, also by law enforcement during roadside inspections, and by state driver's licensing agencies when issuing or renewing driver's CDLs. The Clearinghouse has several different users, each with their own respective regulatory obligations. For example, CDL drivers must register with the Clearinghouse to review their own drug and alcohol testing information and provide consent to employers to run queries through their own accounts. Carriers, on the other hand, use the Clearinghouse to run the required queries and to make reports of certain types of violations. The FMCSA has kept detailed track of Clearinghouse data over the past three years. In fact, it publishes monthly reports that summarize things like how many users have registered, how many drivers have tested positive, what types of substances are causing problems, and how many drivers have and have not started the return to duty process. As of November of 2022, over 3 million CDL drivers and over 425,000 employers have registered for clearinghouse accounts. And over the past three years, employers have run nearly 16 million queries. 171,957 drug testing violations and 3,929 alcohol violations have been reported to the clearinghouse over that time period. Marijuana use accounts for a substantial percentage of the reported violations, and significantly, as of November of 2022, 113,995 drivers are currently in prohibited status due to drug and alcohol testing violations, meaning they are unable to operate a commercial vehicle. So what changes are coming in January of 2023? Well, as I mentioned, that date marks the Clearinghouse's three-year anniversary. On that day, certain portions of the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Regulations are set to change the way that motor carriers qualify new drivers. Now, when the Clearinghouse was first implemented, it was devoid of any data, meaning that when carriers ran the required queries in the Clearinghouse, they would rarely receive any data in return. To avoid gaps in the qualification process, the FMCSA has, to date, required carriers to do two somewhat redundant things when qualifying a new driver. Driver. Number one, they have to run a pre-employment query through the clearinghouse. And number two, they have to manually reach out to the applicant's previous DOT-regulated employers and ask certain questions about that applicant's work history. 
More specifically, when reaching out to previous employers, motor carriers have had to verify the following information. Number one, did this driver work for you? And if so, when? Number two, while working for you, was this driver involved in any DOT recordable accidents or any other types of accidents? And number three, while working for you, did this driver violate the drug and alcohol testing rules? And if so, provide us with information concerning whether that driver has completed the return to duty process. Now, these requests have come to be known as verifications of employment or previous employer safety performance history checks. And it's these verifications that are changing come January of 2023. In particular, as of January 6th, 2023, motor carriers will no longer be required to manually request drug and alcohol testing information from an applicant's previous employers, as that information will be gathered exclusively through the clearinghouse as of that date. Now that said, carriers will still have an obligation to ask the other non-drug and alcohol testing questions that we just discussed. There are two caveats to this change. First, if a driver applicant has previously violated the drug and alcohol testing rules and has not completed the return to duty process, the motor carrier must still manually reach out to that driver's previous employers to request information concerning his or her follow-up testing plan. And second, if an applicant was previously subject to drug and alcohol testing under a different modal agency other than FMCSA, for example, the FAA, FIMSA, Coast Guard, Federal Highway, etc., the prospective motor carrier must manually reach out to that applicant's previous employers to ask questions about the applicant's drug and alcohol testing history. Okay, so that's the change in a nutshell, but what's next? Well, January 6, 2023 is not the last important date for the drug and alcohol clearinghouse. In fact, the FMCSA has implemented a new rule that requires state driver's licensing agencies to begin taking action to suspend, downgrade, and deny driver's CDLs when they learn through the clearinghouse that those drivers are prohibited from operating due to a drug and alcohol testing violation. States have until November of 2024 to implement this change. All right, that's going to wrap things up for this video. If you have questions about your obligations under the clearinghouse rules or other components of the federal safety regulations, please feel free to get in touch with us through our website at trucksafe.com. And for even more in-depth information about these types of regulatory topics, be sure to check out our innovative online compliance courses for safety managers and drivers over at trucksafeacademy.com. Lastly, be sure to follow us on our various social media pages for the latest highway transportation news and analysis. Thanks for watching.